Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. It was recently brought to my attention that there has been a research report on DGOC and it was a bearish article. It was published by Flow and it was shared in my investment chat and uh, in one of the comments on one of my videos. And I thought it would be good to go through that research and see if I agree whether I agree whether I think it's a decent article or whatnot. So um, yeah, I once I started preparing for this video, I realized that it was going to be a, a lot of information to process. So I made it into two parts. So today you see this video and tomorrow you'll have the next video. So let's start. The machines reveal diversified gas and oil production declines. So in this article, Tom Lowry, correct me if I don't pronounce that right, but he uses their simulation model to see what kind of production the DGOC wells are producing and see if they indeed have the decline that they pretend to have, um, or so to speak, in their investment uh, presentations. So this is just an introduction and something I would like to note is that uh, yeah, the energy sector is a complex place, place moving commodity prices constantly up obfuscate asset performance. Um, we simulate over 70 companies in the sector and sometimes we see things that defy our expectations. So that is basically what they did. And um, yeah, something I noticed is once they had done it, they were looking for the reasons as to why and not to, okay, how can we also look at this company? So a little bit of a confirmation bias in my opinion, but we'll get through it and uh, you get to see for yourself. So the DGOC difference is a low base decline, we all know that. And here they mention a human has to take the decline guidance at face value unless they have the technology to test the results. I disagree with this. I think if you look at the DGOC sheets, you can actually tell uh, what kind of declines they're going for or what kind of declines they're achieving. And you can also see the production rates uh, expectations when they are acquiring and they keep mentioning that throughout the quarters as well so you can keep a close eye on it that doesn't mean that they don't have these declines but it's you you can see it if you look deep enough you can see all the information that you want to look for or that you want to know in regards to this topic so next up they go through the business model and there was a few interesting things that I would like to point out here that they mentioned here the previous business model that were similar to currently uh, to the current business model of DGOC and in particular I want to focus on this one uh, but we'll get to that in a bit and I would like that he mentioned the problem with these structures and why they always fail is the valuations eventually exceed the future cash flow if he had looked at the business model of DGOC he would know that this is highly unlikely if you look at their financial model but from what I read from his report, he didn't really look at that. So um, yeah, that, that's something to keep in mind. And lastly, the wealth decline rates are not. Now he was referring to the fact that um, the trucks depreciation is pretty obvious and the wealth decline rates are not. So you could scam the audience if you wish to do so. That was his point. However, when we listen to the earnings call of DGOC, uh, at least the most recent one, there was a question about this and the CEO answered that question. And what he said was, people may think the wells are not declining. They are declining. We put other wells back into production to mitigate these declines in production. Obviously, I'm paraphrasing a bit. I don't remember exactly what he said, like word for word, but I know that this is something that he mentioned. And um, in particular, he was talking about the legacy assets that are supposedly declining at 6% per year but they haven't seen any decline in the past nine quarters so over two years they have barely seen any decline and yeah that is basically the dgo difference that we see um, does that mean that any new acquisitions uh, they shouldn't decline that hard or they cannot decline that hard of course that's always a risk so it's always something that we have to keep looking for but um, just because the results re results show that there is no decline keep in mind they are really declining so um, Tom in this case is onto something. The wells are indeed declining, as CEO agrees. So the second part was the, the EMP MLPs. So which previous businesses ha did this business model and failed? 
and I googled it I'll leave a link in the description below and it was I think it was the first link that I got or at least the top three links and um, yeah they, it went through why these MLPs have failed and it's a combination of factors that have rendered upstream master limited partnerships LMP to be particularly vulnerable to a pullback in commodity prices and this part is then obviously very important Ethan Bellamy managing director at RW Bear the go blah 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 and there are some upstream MLPs that have performed better than others he added but as a group he said they weren't hedged enough and obviously if you don't hedge enough then a pullback in commodity prices will hurt you significantly DGFC hedges 90% of their production which is something that is not mentioned throughout the entire article at all and or has too much unhedgeable natural gas liquid exposure I guess is something previously uh, that was a problem because I do believe you can hedge that now. They spent too much money on acquisitions. Obviously, this is highly debatable. Does DGC spend too much money on acquisitions? I don't think so. I think the payback time from uh, an EBITDA perspective is between three to four years. And sure, with the decline in the future, you won't have a similar production. But I think in this environment, they are not paying too much for any acquisitions. Um, they carry too much debt. Well, we know the financial model of DGOC as well. The debt is structured towards the EBITDA so that they never have too much debt. Obviously, you can, as well as with, uh, there is some such subjectivity in this regard. You could say, well, the net debt to EBITDA of 2.5 is too high. But if you look at any other oil and gas business, I think you'd be very happy with this net debt to EBITDA. They did not deduct enough from distributable cash flow to offset commodity price weakness. Obviously, this is necessary if you don't hedge. Or to switch to payouts that float with commodity prices. Obviously, again, that is necessary when you don't hedge. So why MLPs failed is explainable. And if you then compare that to DGC, is what the report was doing, then you would see, okay, well, they are actually mitigating these risks that the MLPs previously made. And here's the kicker, they failed to either develop a substantial distributable cash flow coverage cushion to offset commodity price weakness or to switch to payouts that flow with commodity prices. So that's basically what we just talked about. But with DGOC, we actually see the cash flow, we know how it's going to be distributed. We know that even though they're going to grow and even though I would like to see this uh, dividends stay in the company so that they can grow even harder, they say, no, we are just having this way of our cash flow distribution so why these previous companies have failed um if he would explain that then we would see okay did you see is unlikely to do something that fails on a similar level then the report shows this and i found this very interesting um so the gut checking flows decline forecast so here they have checked the decline in the wells Obviously, I don't know which wells they checked. I doubt they checked it all. But um, yeah, the decline you see here and the legacy older wells, like, yeah, they are declining. But apparently, TGC is doing something different that is mitigating this decline. Like, you could think, okay, they are butching up the numbers or they are, like, uh, very creative in their accounting. But I think that they are just doing something different that mitigates these declines. Um... I do think that this would be a very good question to ask in the next earnings call and see what they think about this. But obviously in their sheets, they have already mentioned what they do differently to mitigate these declines and to put other wells into production and so on. So, but regardless, I found this very interesting to, to read. Um, it also mentioned the company has become increasingly acquisitive, which would be a normal response to reserve replacement needs. Yes, sure. But um, that's quite obvious. In the sense that, yeah, if you need to sustain your dividends and, yeah, your production is declining, then you need to acquire other assets in order to keep the same dividend. However, what we have seen is that they are not maintaining dividends or free cash flow, but they are increasing it. So, could be the case that their acquisitions still have some coverage of the previous decline. But since they measure it with each acquisition, how it is declining, I don't think we should look at acquisitions like this. Like, they are very honest about it in the sheets so really surprised by comments like that something even more surprising comment and i think that was the most cynical one in the report is that we did some more digging to test the company's claim of smarter one management 
Obviously, he finds that very cynical to offset the clients. Smart and well management seems novel, especially for management team located several area codes away from their assets. So he's referring to this image. Like, yeah, this is their headquarters and this is where they're producing. Like, I don't know what kind of... Uh, what did he did expect? Did he expect that their headquarters would be right next to one of the biggest wells or something? Like, I, f I find that a bit odd and assume that perhaps they get some acquisitions here. Would he then not make this comment? Like, uh, yeah, is it that hard to move your ass from here to there? Like, it's I find it very, very weird to have a comment in that. Like, he should know that from a top level in, in a management perspective, there there is no need to, for you to have your boots on the ground 24-7. If you did, you probably weren't uh, going to be a CEO anyway because you were too involved on the operational level. Then another thing they showed, which is quite of interesting, is the... Um, I'll just read it first. However, we only really found one concrete example provided by the company. As soon as the company took over the well, became much worse. Sample of one, but this was the example they provided. So apparently it was provided in, in a presentation. I haven't seen this, um, but I guess they provided the name of a well and then they have run it in their model. And what you see here is that, yeah, there is this, like a steady decline and then um, it's been taken over. And then the well breaks down immediately and it drops and then there is an increase again. Or so it seems. This obviously looks bad, but there is just another way to look at this. Like, um, we, we know when they acquire wells that they have certain expectations. The expectations are uh, mentioned in these acquisition reports that we get uh, in, in their announcements. And... I doubt that they are making that announcement with this if they are going to do this. They make this announcement with this. So they are doing something different to offset any particular decline. So the fact that you are doing something different than that has been done before and that is shown here, like I'm not that worried about it as long as um, the acquisition is calculated based on this. And how can we mention, or how can we know that? Well, if it is mentioned on this, and then this happened, then the financial results would instantly reflect that. There wouldn't be any exception in that regard. Like, it would instantly notice this, okay, well, we have a steep decline, it was worse than we thought, okay, how can we uh, resolve that? So, it is based off of this, and, yeah, I'm surprised that this is something so negative, and uh, obviously there is a major assumption here as well that there is one well that they know so the other 90,000 that he mentioned I believe here then yeah they should be worse at least that's what he's insinuating but I'm not necessarily sure that this is such a bad thing like it just shows that DJC is indeed doing something different than the other producers so now we're going to the sample size. To run the decline package, we set our minimum decline rate of the first fight gas was noise to 3%. Um, uh, we, we wouldn't want to unduly bias the results with a forced minimum decline assumption like 5%. Our results were astonishing. In aggregate, we forecast a 19% base gas decline rate for diversified. This is a huge discrepancy versus the company's stated claims of 5%. If correct, which is of course very important, this would mean that diversified needs to replace assets at a rapid rate to continue paying their dividends. Yes, if correct, you are indeed uh, looking at that. And if we see something like this, then it would instantly be reflected in the, in the free cash flow. Um... So, yeah, only time will tell, of course, if this is true. And if he is right, then indeed they will need to acquire st assets to continue their dividends or they need to lower their dividends. Both are covered in their financial model. So not too worried about this, but yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting to say the least. And it's correct what he mentioned here. Like if it drops at this rate and uh, we want to have the same dividends, then yeah, the first of all needs to replace these assets. Have we seen this decline rate in their legacy assets where it's probably most expected? No, we haven't. So yeah, we'll see what the future t tells us. But um, yeah, I'm not too worried about this part. But yeah, if this forecast is correct, we are pretty... We're in a bit of a pickle. Something else we thought was interesting was this chart, which is stated to understand, again with this part, their unconventional assets. It looks like Diversified purchases these wells around a 200 MCF per day rate. And I guess he is right that it, that does look like it. But 
yeah, it, it does look like that. But if you look at the numbers, you won't see something like that. However, we found only 45 wells accounting for less than 1% of production. And he means, he means here producing wells, I believe. Averaging a 2000 MCF a day at the arbitrary sample month of December 2018. Out of 37k plus producing wells. What did we find? Very low production wells. Very low. Get a bit of a Trump vibe here. Um, we found 18,000 wells producing less than 15 MCF per day, which in this price environment will barely buy you lunch. Why I mark this part? Well, if you know that they hedge, then you wouldn't write this because, um, yeah, that seems so st stupid to mention the price environment. Um, if you would understand this business, if you would know what the business is doing. So I found that a bit odd that if you produce this, if this is your production and even at the low price environment, you would still get about 30 bucks in, in revenue. And sure, with the, the margins that DGC has, yeah, you can basically buy yourself lunch. But that, that's not really important. Of course, obviously, it's just a sensational sentence right there. But um, yeah. If you know that they hedge, you wouldn't make a comment like this, in my opinion. And obviously, the, the, the hedging is not reflected in the report at all. So, this is their producing wells from DGC of their research. So, 15 MCF per day, only 20,000 produce more than that, and 15,000 produce less than that, or 18,000 produce less than 15 MCF per day. This is not our idea of quality assets as described in the investor presentation. And with this, I would like to close the first video because I'm going to dive in right now into the calculations of this producing wells. And if we could have known this, if we could have known this by just looking at the number. So um, this is just the final thing we're looking at and then uh, that'll be it. The assets. Our asset base is comprised of approximately 60,000 conventional and unconventional natural gas, natural gas liquids and oil producing wells. 60,000, that's the number we're looking for. So those are the amounts of wells. Then we look at the recent earnings report and then we see the production. How much production they produce per day. 640 M MCFE per day. So 1 M is 1,000, so 640,000 MCFE per day. That's the production. That leaves us with this. 640. 40,000 MCF per day, 60,000 wells. That means that the average well produces about 10 or 11 MCF per day. Is this low? Probably, if you think, if you are expecting 2,000. But the report didn't show anything new, right? This could just be calculated based on the numbers that we see. If this is your average, like the report actually shows that it's a bit higher than that, which is kind of interesting. But if this is your number that you go for, then obviously a lot of wells are going to produce lower than that and a lot are going to produce higher. And if you think about only 45 wells produce 2,000, so that's all the way up here basically on in any graph, then yeah, it makes sense that even more wells are having a, a low production. So looking at the entire business model, I feel like this uh, report didn't show anything new in that regard, but it did make me go a little bit deeper. When we look at part two, we're going to look at a little bit uh, deeper into the cost structure and what we can expect in the future and yeah, what, what to look for as well. And my thoughts on DGOC in particular now that I've read this report. That's it for today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know down in the comments below and leave a like. And yeah, let me know in general what you think of DGOC and this report. Always good to have more opinions on the same matter. So uh, thank you guys for watching and see you guys tomorrow.